Hello, and welcome to Mimosas and Macrame, although this morning we're drinking our coffee. Mmm, that's good. This YouTube channel will be devoted to doing macrame crafts, drinking some mimosas or other beverages, some houseplant information and maybe some <coughs> houseplant swapping, and we'll try to bring our community together in this time with all the social is isolation going on. With me today is my lovely assistant, Rosie, and her little cat, Freckles. Hi, Freckles. And Rosie will be handing me those supplies you're going to need for the first project that we'll do together. Psh, high five. <laughs> so we created this channel, Mimosas and Macrame, to help people get through this really difficult, stressful, and completely new experience we're having right now with COVID-19. I had been scheduled to teach several adult uh, macrame classes in March and April, and those classes have all been canceled, unfortunately. And Ooh. so I wanted to be able to make some videos to share how to do some of these crafts and engage people who would have been in my classes. And obviously now with the miracle of YouTube, be able to share this information with people around the world. So today's yes. class we're recording. Uh, we're going to do an uh, actual craft on Monday, March 23rd at noon, and we're going to use YouTube Live. So we'll c connect with people through social media to show that we're up and running and doing the craft live and you can tune in and do it along with us. And Freckles has been very excited. Yes. Please, please. So we urge you to like and subscribe our channel and we'll be trying to post a new macrame craft every week. Hit the notification bell. There you go. My YouTube expert. Yay. Um, okay, so here's what you're going to need. So the great thing about macrame is you don't actually need a lot of supplies or any special equipment. And in fact, the greatest, the most important thing you need is just a place to hang your project. So one of the tricky, um, tricky ideas I've learned is you can actually just take a picture down off your wall and use the hook that's there to hang your macrame project. Um, another way you can... Another way you can do that is if you have a rolling clothing rack, you can hang a project that way. And yet one more way is if you have a clipboard at home, I actually scored this awesome giant clipboard at Seattle Recreative, which is a great craft store and thrift store, but it has places for two projects and you can clip a project on there and actually just work. This is great if you just want to sit on the couch and relax. Um, yes, so some of the other supplies you're going to need are obviously some scissors, and you can <coughs> use anything, regular scissors, shears, kitchen knives, Boy Scout knife. Um, if you have bracelets or other rings, you can use these to hang the project off of. Okay, down kitty. Okay. You okay. are obviously going to need some kind of material, so this is just regular yarn. You can use that. Um, this is kind of a cool material I found. So anything like this, you can use, make t-shirt yarn. Um, if, you go to, if you go to Joann's, this is a product called Hildy and Joe Black Polyester Macrame Cord. This is um, three millimeter macrame cord. And then I actually ordered this from QualityNylonRope.com. This is one eighth inch black cotton unglazed. This is actually used for marine business of some kind. Probably made in the United States. This is actually like 25 bucks and you get 600 feet. So this is a really great deal. And also here is this special yes. red roll. You also may want some beads. Um, these were just from Joann's. And maybe some colorful purple, yellow. Sure. You can use all kinds of crazy stuff. Pretty much anything that is some sort of string can be used for macrame. So we, oh, um, the other thing I'm going to have available are printable patterns. I've never actually made an actual pattern before, but I did make these as a handout for students who are taking my class. So these will be available as a PDF. I can email out to people after or maybe before the class, so you can follow along. And the other thing I just want to show is, because macrame comes has been done for a long time, uh, 
in the recent history in the 70s this is very popular so there's some really great macrame patterns and booklets available um, that talk about the history or talk about some really crazy projects you can do and also if you guys feel confident you guys if you guys want us to make some merch you guys can <laughs> well, you want to have mimosas and macrame t-shirts yeah we could do that Yay. here why don't you show your pony to everybody oh yeah well i get another handout So last night, me and my mom, we went to Richmond Beach and we found this beautiful white stick and we came home and I was using this as a pony. Yeah. And my mom thought maybe, oh, maybe you should put some string and some hair and a tail. And we did. So we made this beautiful pony. Her name is Dolly. I use her a lot. So, yeah. All right. So yeah, macrame, even some simple macrame knots could be used to, to make, make other crafts. Like, like toys or ponies or you name it, you can make it. It's, there you go. Totally. You can do anything you want if you set your mind to do it. So we just wanted to show this picture, or sorry, this project is what we're going to make on Monday. So all you're going to need is a stick. So like Rosie said, we went to the beach yesterday and collected some wood. This is probably about a foot long and that's fine. You don't need anything longer than that. And then you're gonna need about 50 feet of either yarn, rope. You can actually go to the hardware store and just get clothesline um, or any other kind of cord. So we'll make this project together on Monday um, during our YouTube live session. So I just wanted to give a little history of macrame because it's actually really fascinating. And someone had asked me at one of my classes, oh, is it macrame, like culturally appropriating, um, you know, some kind of cultural practice? And I said, no, actually macrame is a perfect example of a global craft that's really gone around the whole world and been adapted and reused and brought to different people at all different times of history. So to me, it's a global craft that really um, can share and kind of adapt to whoever is doing it. So macrame is believed to have originated in the 13th century Arab weavers who would, the artisans would knot the excess thread and yarn along the edges of the hand loom fabrics to make decorative fringes or bath, on bath towels, shawls, and veils. The Spanish word macrame is derived from the Arabic migrama, believed to mean striped towel or ornamental fringe or embroidered veil. If you know the exact translation, please let me know. After the Moorish conquest, the art was taken to Spain and then Italy, especially in the region of Liguria, and then spread through Europe. And it was introduced into England at the court of Mary II in the late 17th century. Queen Mary taught the art of macrame to her ladies-in-waiting. It's a great craft to do with other people. Um, even if people are doing it at different speeds, it's kind of a fun social activity. And then sailors made use of macrame objects to um, create things while they were at sea and then sold them or bartered them when they got back to shore and spread the art to places like China and the New World. In 19th century, British and American sailors made hammocks, bell fringes, and belts from macrame. They called the process square knotting after the knot they used most frequently, which is mostly what we'll be doing right here. Uh, sailors often called macrame McNamara's lace, Macrame was most popular in the Victorian era. Sylvia's Book of Macrame Lace, a favorite, sh showed readers how to work rich trimmings for black and colored costumes, both for homeware, garden parties, seaside ramblings, and balls. Fairy-like adornments for household and under linens. Most Victorian homes were adorned by this craft. Macrame was used to make household items such as tablecloths, bedspreads, and curtains. So this whole thing was from a book by Virginia Colton from 1979, The Complete Guide to Needlework. So I just wanted to let everyone know that macrame is really a craft that can be adopted and obviously is spread over the entire world. So at a time like this where we're all feeling very isolated, I feel like this is a great chance for everybody to do something together. So I hope you join me on Monday, March 23rd at noon, Facebook, or uh, sorry, YouTube Live, um, and I will make links with, I also have an Instagram account and we'll be trying to push that out through social media. So, and if you miss the Facebook live, it'll obviously be used as a recorded, uh, video after that.
Wait, Facebook Live? Thank you very much. Hope you stay safe and well, and hopefully we will see you soon through our channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.